This is a production of WTVI PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to this edition of Charlotte Cooks. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts and I'm very glad you joined me today. Today we're going to be talking about how to roast peppers and we're going to make a roasted pepper salad that we're going to serve with Belgian endive and lovely toast points. It's a great little salad to have on the side and you can do so many other things with it. But the main point of today's show is to teach you how to roast peppers. Okay, what kind of peppers am I talking about? Well, we are going to be talking about sweet peppers. We're not talking about hot peppers, although hot peppers can be treated in the same way. We've got on our sweet pepper variety here, red, yellow, orange. The green ones aren't necessarily what we would call sweet peppers because the green peppers are primarily just these peppers that are still under ripe a little bit, okay? So for this salad, you're gonna to wanna to choose nice, big, plump, meaty, red, yellow, and green peppers. And I'm going to show you how to roast them in the oven to remove the skins. And then there's another way of roasting them as well. Now, some people say that the stovetop method of roasting the pepper is not quite as sweet as the final product, but I'll let you be the judge of that, okay? So this is how we're going to get started. First of all, I'm going to show you how we're going to roast the peppers for the oven. You can see, I'm going to put this one right here because we're going to work on him next. You can see that I've already got some started. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the pepper you're going to give them a wash. You're going to remove any stickers that are on there. We're going to basically, we're going to cut around the seed pocket. Oh, and sometimes you get a bonus. Look, a little baby green one. But you don't have to use the little baby green ones on the inside unless you really wanted to. And so what I'm going to do with this one at this point is just cut this off like this. I'm just cutting off the top of the pepper. And then I'm going to use my knife and I'm going to get in here and I'm going to remove any of these large ribs that are in here, okay? And then I'm going to put this cut side down on the sheet pan. You want to make sure you get rid of any seeds and remove any of these big ribs, okay? And just, do you have to be exact and careful with this? No, but you just don't want them there on your pepper. Why? They're not very pretty and they don't taste very good, all right? So shake all your seeds out, put them down. And now, just take these, you're gonna put them in like a 450 degree oven, all right? And they're gonna get nice and toasty. The second way, you got a gas burner, you got an electric burner, you got a gas grill. We're gonna turn this on, and you're gonna take this pepper, you're gonna put it directly on the burner, okay? And so what this is going to do, the whole point of this is to char the skin, all right? We're charring the skin, the skin is gonna turn black and it's going to start pulling up from the meat of the pepper. And that's the whole point of this, okay? Once you start, you can see it. See, it's starting to blister and it's starting to black. And that's what you want it to look like pretty much all over. The more black it is, the easier the skin is gonna come off. And you know, to me, almost like the sugars get caramelized inside the pepper. But you can see that it's starting to turn nice and black, okay? So as that turns black, you just keep turning it over the burner until the whole thing gets nice and black. And if the bottom doesn't get black, you just stand it up like that. It could take up to five to 10 minutes for it to get completely black on you, okay? So give yourself plenty of time, okay? So while that one's sitting there, I'm gonna pop these in the oven. Now, as I mentioned, you want a nice hot oven, about 450 degrees. Can you do it under the broiler? Absolutely, you can do it under the broiler, but you gotta watch them, okay? So let me go. And we're gonna check the bottom of this. Ah, you see how nice and dark that's getting? That's exactly what you want. That is not burnt. That's the roasting part. And you know what the neat thing about it is? You can smell it everywhere. There's a very, very, very wonderful aroma that comes with roasting peppers. And if you're not familiar with it, you'll get familiar with it when you try this technique. There's nothing quite like it. Alrighty now, our peppers have been on the burner for a while. As you can see, look at this. Oh my goodness that's what you want, okay? So now, here's the next step. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it into a bowl. If I could pick it up without killing it there. And turn off your burner so you don't burn yourself. Here is the secret. 
steam it. Voila. The cellophane. I know this is a monster roll of cellophane, but that's what we have. You can have one too. Go to your restaurant supply store. Nice and tight. Just let this sit. And what's going to happen is the heat from that pepper now is going to sit there and this whole pepper is going to steam. All right? The ones in the oven are going to do the same thing. Let me show you what they look like. Ah, look at these. Okay? There's a little bit of a difference between these two. This one's going to have more black. This one's going to be blistered, but while it's still hot, I need to get cellophane on it so I can maintain all this beautiful heat and let them steam also. Cellophane, tin foil will work. I like cellophane so you can see the progress. And that's hot, so be careful. And you're saying she's putting cellophane on a hot pan? Yes, and do you know why? Because it makes a good seal. It is a little bit designed to be heat resistant like this, okay? So I'm going to let those steam. So I have another pan over here that I have steamed already. And I'm going to show you how we are going to take the skins off. All right, so obviously this pan's now cool. Now I've got these beautiful peppers. I've already removed the skins from these, but I've got this one here. Now, one of the biggest things I really want to caution you about when you're doing these peppers, and I see this happening all the time. I see it with students, I see it in restaurants, I see it all over the place. Where they take these peppers now and they run them under water to remove the blackened skin. Well, when you do that, you're washing all the flavor of that pepper down the drain as well, and all you're left with is the texture of the pepper and not the flavor of the pepper. So by all means, in any way you can, don't put them under water, okay? So what am I going to do here? I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pull it, and this skin will come off. See that? Look at that. Voila. Skin comes right off. Do you have any use for this? Absolutely not. It's indigestible. That's one of the reasons we take this off, okay? See how we do that? Where it's nice and blistered and it's nice and cool. Isn't that great? Skin just peels right off. So now we can proceed with the making of our salad. Now folks, your hands are going to get dirty doing this, so just be prepared to go through a few towels. Um, you can wash your hands. Just don't wash the peppers, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I've got my bowl. And in my bowl here, I've got some peppers that I've already roasted. I'm going to take my peppers that I've cut, and I'm just going to take my knife and cut them into thin strips. Now, do you have to cut them in strips for this salad? Yes. If you wanted to use these peppers for something else, like say for a sandwich, wouldn't that be great on a grilled mushroom sandwich just like this? You know, I really like these. I like wrapping goat cheese up inside of them and putting them, you're going to think this is awful, and then put it inside of a piece of grilled eggplant. It sounds really weird, but I've actually won an award with it before, and it's delicious. And I'll have to do a show on that one sometime, just so you could see it, okay? So, but because we're doing a marinated pepper salad today, I'm just going to take these peppers and I'm going to give them nice little strips, okay? Now, what could you do with these roasted peppers if you didn't want to make this salad, but you wanted to roast some peppers because the technique is just a cool technique to have? You could make these and put them on top of any kind of a salad. You can put them on sandwiches. You can also take them, and they make an amazing pizza topping. You could use them on top of chicken. You could stir them into pasta. There's a lot of things that you can do with the roasted pepper. And if you wanted to roast a green one, you certainly can. But the green ones, they don't have a very pretty color when they're roasted. Um, the yellow ones, look at this, mmm, yum. And all this black on there is just the caramelized sugar from the peppers that just really make what we love about roasted peppers. Okay, did you see that last one? I stacked up two of them, so I got two done at one time. And now for my salad, what I'm going to want to use in my salad, you see we've got the peppers and, and you know, the orange ones, they don't show up as much, but I just like knowing that I've used yellow, red, orange. You could use all red, you could use all yellow, you could use all orange, whatever it is you want to use, okay? So the other part of this recipe, we're going to use some capers. Sprinkle some capers in here, not too much. Remember, capers have a little bit of salt to them. And I wanted to show you something else too. These are capers. These are what we normally find all over the place. But do you know about these? 
These are called caper berries. They're like capers, but like monster capers on steroids. These are really fun just to add as a nice garnish, and I'll show you how we're going to put those on the plate when we're ready to plate up our salad, okay? So we've got our capers in there. We don't have any seasonings in here yet. So what we're going to be using, a little bit of salt, not a whole lot of salt. Why? Because we have the capers in there, and the capers have salt in them. So you always have to be aware of that, okay? So the normal amount of salt you would use, you're just going to cut back a little bit, okay? Now, you can use white pepper. You can use black pepper. Anybody who knows me, I'll usually use the white pepper because I don't want to see flecks. If I do want to see flecks, black pepper's okay. And really, is it going to matter with a roasted pepper? you got black flecks in there anyway. Kind of sort of, the pepper's going to be a little on the black side little bit of a high quality olive oil. And I'm going to put a little bit, a pinch of granulated garlic and another pinch of granulated onion. There's another way that you can do this salad too where you put the salad in the oven and let it roast a little bit until the peppers are even more tender. If you wanted to do that, you could use fresh garlic. Um, but if you're going to be serving this without putting that pepper salad in the oven, then you want to go ahead and use a granulated garlic because the fresh garlic can be a little on the bitter side, okay? So what do I have here in my tongs? In my tongs, I have everybody's favorite pizza topping, anchovies. Don't go running off scared. Oh, I hate anchovies. I hate anchovies. Remember, anchovies have a tremendous flavor to them. It doesn't always come off as a fishy flavor. And we're not like taking it and just loading it up with anchovies. I like putting a little bit of the anchovy in there and stirring it in really well. Now, my anchovies, I've taken them and I have chopped them up nice and fine. And once again, you have to remember, anchovies are another source of salt. Okay, so you have to be careful with that one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some fresh thyme leaves. Fresh thyme leaves, as you know, thyme grows on nice, lovely little stalks. The easiest way, now if I'm cooking this, I throw the whole thyme in there, the leaves fall off in the cooking, and then I pull the little sticks out. Well, since that's not what we're doing today, I'm going to grab the thyme by the top, and I'm going to take my fingers and slide it down like just like that. And all the beautiful little leaves, whoop, will come breaking off just like that. <laughs> Okay, there we go, and break them in there. Do this really easy way of getting lots and lots of nice, fresh, lovely thyme leaves into your salad. Now, here's a caution. If you want to use dried thyme, you want to smell it first. You want to taste it first. Make sure you know what fresh thyme is supposed to taste like because dried thyme is supposed to smell like fresh thyme does. If it doesn't, Dried thyme, when it gets old, it has a tendency to smell and taste a lot like dirt. You know, dirt right after the rain, you know, you get that really earthy smell sometimes. Well, not so fresh dried thyme will taste like that. And believe it or not, when you put it into a dish, it really is overpowering and you could really smell it and you can taste it. To me, it really ruins the dish. And so I make it a policy myself in my kitchen to only use fresh thyme because I love, 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 love fresh thyme but I don't like the dried thyme smell, especially when it gets to be a little bit too much. Okay, so now you see little tiny flecks of green in there, and we can take some basil. I just went out to the store today, and I was looking, and I said, all right, I wanted to get some fresh basil. Now, this is not the time of year for basil to be growing. Basil grows in a short period of time during the year, so look, they had some plants. So I went ahead and I grabbed the plant because I know myself, I could water the plant, that's not a big deal, and that's gonna keep that basil fresh for me for as long as I want, okay? And in the kitchen, just make sure you put it next to a sunny window so you can keep it growing all winter. They really don't do well outside unless it's warm, but golly, having these fresh basil leaves in this salad is really a nice compliment too. So I'm gonna show you a quick way to chiffonade. You're going to take some basil leaves, and you don't need very much for this, only about four or five, and you're going to stack them up. Ooh, this smells so good. You're going to stack them up, and you get little bitty ones. You just tuck them inside, okay? Starting at the stem end, we're going to roll it up like a little bitty cigar, okay? It is a very little bitty cigar. We're going to cut it. We're going to drizzle this into our salad. This is a chiffonade, basically just means ribbons. So we are gonna have nice long ribbons of the basil in the salad, which is nice, because it sort of matches the long strips of the peppers, okay? So next we're gonna get ready and I'm gonna show you how to set our plate up for the salad. I get asked a 
lot about what kinds of tools and equipment that I like to have in my kitchen. So today I'm going to go over a couple of my favorite things. If you have these things, it's going to be great because you're going to be able to do a lot of stuff. We're going to start off with some stainless steel spoons. These are what we call kitchen spoons and you can get these relatively inexpensively. We call this a slotted spoon. There's a couple of other varieties you need. This is called a perforated spoon. So anything that you have with perforations in it, these are really good for getting things out of water. Um, these are if their things are small. And then we also have two kinds of slotted spoons. These are also very popular for pulling things out like eggs out of boiling water or something like that. But you could certainly use these a lot. The next thing I would highly suggest is to have a set of measuring cups. The measuring cups for dry measures usually come from one quarter, a half, a third, all the way up to one cup. And if you are clever and you look around, you could even find measuring cups that have two thirds of a cup, three quarters of a cup, so you don't have to constantly reuse your other measurings. And I like getting the stainless steel kind with the handles that are not welded on. I've actually had handles fall off before, so I really like the ones that have the handles that are, that are just like one piece of unit. The next thing I like to have is measuring spoons, and I think measuring spoons are very essential. Almost every recipe you use at home will call for some form of a measurement that will have a teaspoon, tablespoon, or whatever. If you're clever in finding the measuring spoons, you can find one that has a whole lot more in it. And I highly suggest getting the measuring spoon set that has as many different units in it as you can. Get yourself some high heat spatulas. High heat spatulas are wonderful for, you can use them in your bowls for, for cold products. You can also use them directly on your stove for if you're cooking something and you're not gonna worry about melting your spatula down because it is made for high heat. You get a good sturdy handle, you wanna make sure, especially when you buy your spatulas, give it a little press on the table. Make sure that handle is, is quite firm. Find yourself a fish spatula. A fish spatula is a spatula that's got a slight curve to it and it's slotted. You can use it for flipping meat, you can use it for flipping fish, you can also use it for removing cookies from your pan. So this is a really nice one to have. And the thing I like about the perforations on this is if you are, say, frying something like a, a cutlet, you can take that cutlet out and it leaves that oil behind. You need a peeler. Lots of peelers around. This is a very common peeler. It's called the swivel peeler. The peeling part will swivel back and forth. And that's important because when they do that, that allows you to go in both directions when you're doing a carrot instead of just going in one direction. We also have peelers that look like these. These are just fine. You can definitely use these. You can use these ends here to pull the eyes out of potatoes or whatever. It's just another style of peeler. Another thing I like to suggest for you to have is a set of stainless steel bowls, big ones, medium sized ones, small ones. You're gonna use these things all over the place. And I like having stainless steel bowls because they go in the dishwasher, they can go in the oven, you can use all your utensils in them and you don't have to worry about ruining anything. A pair of tongs, these become your second hands. Pull things out of the oven, pick things up, move things around. These are really wonderful. Now when you get tongs, you wanna make sure they're good and sturdy. You need a glass measuring cup, get a big one. You can use it from a half a cup all the way up to four cups. Four cups is a quart. You can use this for all kinds of things. Another thing you need to have is a really good quality wire mesh strainer. Get one that has tiny holes on it. You might need to get a couple of them, some with larger holes, some with smaller holes. Um, you'll have lots and lots of uses for these. That is some of the things that I like to have in the kitchen. We're gonna grab a plate. And on this plate, we have something that's called Belgian endive. Okay, Belgian endive, you go into the grocery and you find these things and most people would look at that and go, what is it? What do I do with it? I don't have a clue. And if they take a bite of this, take one of these leaves off and bite it, your first reaction is, that's incredibly bitter. I wanna spit that out, but give it a chance, okay? Belgian endive is very bitter, but here is a secret for y'all. When you have things that are bitter, what really makes the bitterness mild out basically is to add something sweet to it and so their magic that happens when the sweet peppers are served on the endive leaves and when you eat those sweet peppers with the endive leaves my goodness your taste buds go wow kapow it's just they're popping all over the place because you've got that sweetness and you've got the bitterness and you've got the salty and you've got this it's just so good okay so this is how you handle the endive don't choke on the price buy one because that's usually all you need okay when you're using the endive, you're going to look at the bottom, okay? 
Now, the reason they're pale is because when they grow, they're continually buried so that they don't really get any sunlight, and that's why they're pale. We're going to cut the tip of the bottom off. Okay? But then you're going to be able to take your leaves off. You're going to be able to place your leaves on your platter. See how nice these are? And you know what's neat about this? This is these now become like little dipping spoons. Okay? And when you eat this, you basically just put your salad in the bottom of it, and you could stand here and munch, 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 crunch, 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 eat, eat, eat. And it's lovely. You're going to notice that as you go down, they start sticking again. Okay? So all you want to do is just keep trimming it so that the leaves freely fall apart. Okay? I'm going to take the salad now and I'm going to place it down the center of my plate. This is a wonderful way of serving this. And I put parsley on the plate too. Once again, it's that bitter thing. I like the flat leaf parsley. The flat leaf parsley is a little bit different than the regular parsley. The regular parsley is all nice and curly up. Flat leaf, the leaves are broad and they're flat and they still have that lovely, lovely parsley flavor. Let me tell you guys, if you're not eating the parsley garnish on your plate, you're missing the most nutritious thing on your plate. These things are packed with iron. They are so good for your blood. You should eat your parsley on your plate. So incorporate it into your salad. Once again, it's one of those bitter flavors that's really going to be complemented so well by the sweetness of all these peppers. Just line these right up the middle. And look at how pretty and colorful this is. You don't have to worry about not having the green from the green peppers in this because you can get the green from the endive, you can get the green from the parsley, you can get green from a lot of other areas. Okay? What about that, huh? Look at that. Make sure you get some of your goodies on top. Goodies being your capers and a little bit of your anchovies and your basil and your thyme in any of this lovely marinade that's dripped down to the bottom. And I say marinade because I put some seasonings on it. Um, there, there's some seasonings on the peppers. And so instead of just being a plain roasted pepper, I call it a marinated pepper because it does have the garlic and the oil. <sighs> Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, there's something else we're going to do to it as well. We can take some toast points. And you could easily do this. Just take a nice baguette, go to the store and get a nice French baguette and cut it on a diagonal. Give it a little spray with some oil. These are nice crunch. Put them in your oven and get them nice and toasted. And put them around on your plate so people can choose to have an endive if they're adventurous. And they can choose to have a toast point if they decide that they want it to be a little bit more conservative. But folks, I'm telling you, you got to try the endive, okay? You've got to try the endive. It will rock your world. I can guarantee it. So look at this. How's that? For a beautiful marinated roasted pepper salad. And there we go. Here's your roasted pepper salad. I hope you try it. I hope you enjoy it, because it really is delicious. Just put a little on the endive, put a little on a cracker, crunch it up, and if there's anything left over, put it on a pizza and eat it. Puree it, make a soup. There's a lot, but you won't have any left. It's a great dish to bring to a party. It's a great dish to put out on a buffet. Try it, but before you go, I want to show you how to peel this little puppy. This is going to be different than the ones we did here where you just pull the skins up. This is where you're going to be tempted to go to the sink, okay? And I'm saving this for last because this does get messy. The cellophane that you just had over the top, if you use tin foil, the tin foil that you just had over the top, you're going to want this on your cutting board, okay? You're going to take your pepper, now that it's nice and cool, and you're going to pick it up. <laughs> and if there's any juices that collect in here, you might choose to use those because those juices are yummy. We're going to take this pepper, we're going to pull it, We should be able to get the insides out. And, yeah, like I said, you're going to be tempted to go to the sink because look at this big goopy mess here. But that's what this is all about. Now you can use a knife and scrape it off. You can use a napkin and scrape it off. Okay. Just like this. But the whole point is to get all the skin off the pepper. And you can see how when you blacken it, it really does make it easy to get that off. 
And so, what's the big secret? You got this big mess going on, and all you want to do is go wash your hands, okay? Grab a towel, a kitchen towel, not just any old towel, okay? But a nice kitchen towel, one that you don't mind getting a little funky, and just wipe it with a towel. And you can also do this with a paper towel, okay? Then you can just throw the paper towels away and just wipe this blackened skin right off. And what you're going to have left on the inside, just peel it open, and you could pull your membranes out, pull the seed pods out. Yeah, it gets a little messy, but you know that's the part of the roasting the peppers that, that makes it fun. This is also why I cautioned you about not going to the sink, because this is the part where you want to go, Whoa, take it to the sink and clean that up. But persevere, use your knife, use paper towels, use clean towels, and wash your hands and not the pepper. You see how this is all coming off? And so you may need to switch to a series of towels just so you don't keep putting this black stuff back up on the pepper. I want to thank you for watching this episode of Charlotte Cooks. You can find our recipes on our website, pbscharlotte.org. And if you care to email me, please do. I love to hear from viewers. My email is pamela.roberts at cpcc.edu. Please email me. I love to hear from you. Let me know how you like the salad. I hope you try it soon. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Charlotte Cooks. Production of WTBI PBS Charlotte.